Hey everybody. Well, I thought I'd do a little quick vlog on my audio workflow today. I haven't did a vlog in a while. I thought everybody might enjoy it. And before we even get started, I want to say I hope everybody is doing safe and staying indoors with the human malware problem going around. So, <laughs> yeah, uh, kind of staying indoors myself, trying to stay away from everybody and trying to just stay healthy. So I hope everybody else do the same and the best wishes go out to everybody. So anyway, I figure everybody probably doesn't want to pay too much attention about the human malware issue. I'm kind of want to, uh, if you're on the internet, you're probably looking for an escape for it all. So I thought I'd kind of do like a little behind the scenes vlog today on my audio workflow and stuff that I got going on with inside DaVinci Resolve. And, uh, well, yeah. So a lot of my friends and stuff over on uh, Epos Vox's uh, website, uh, yeah, on the, the audio editing channel and stuff, been giving me advice over the past couple months, and I've been taking it and uh, using that advice and getting a few plugins and tweaking my audio, and I hope it is sounding uh, pretty good to everybody. So let me know how my audio and stuff sounds down in the comments below. But before we get in here to this vlog and stuff, I want to say do check out this awesome product from A Shampoo. A Shampoo Backup Pro 14 backs up your data and operating system automatically to all common storage types and cloud services. Always up to date backups take the fear out of hardware failure, OS issues, or malware infections. Don't miss my demo and review of Backup Pro 14. Plus, learn more and download your free trial by clicking the links in the description below okay welcome back everybody yeah do check out the awesome product from a shampoo and everything uh that's what helps support this channel and stuff because you know ad revenue and stuff these days is really iffy and you know that you know purchasing through a uh, you know a shampoo is not going to affiliate with me so it really does help support the channel and everything and i do appreciate it and also in case you're uh, subscribed to my channel and you're not getting notifications, do check out the little bell icon down the uh, bottom and make sure that it is selected because I have a lot of subscribers, but doesn't seem to be getting a lot of views and stuff. And I figure it's probably YouTube uh, kind of keep my channel and stuff pushed down. So to make sure you get notified when I got videos and stuff, do check out the check the bell icon down the subscription feed thing. So anyway, uh, that's it. I hope everybody's doing well, but. Let's get over here. Let's kind of talk about my audio workflow because, like I said, I've been updating it uh, quite a bit, changing things around and improving it. And the whole philosophy around my audio is I'm trying to get, you know, good audio into the system so I can get better audio out. Um, my whole idea is if you put crap audio in, you're going to get crap out. And, you know, the whole, you know, crap in, crap out type thing. So I've been really trying to, you know, improve the audio overall going in. And the first thing I've been doing to do that is to actually I got a new mixer. If y'all haven't seen the review on that, that is my Behringer Q502. Now, wonderful mixer. Um, actually powering my AT2035 microphone with it right now. And it works quite well. And uh, I do plan on upgrading mixers, though because I have a couple of the microphones at your need closer to uh, 48 volts phantom power. You've probably seen the review. Well, if you're watching this video, the review is already out <laughs> on the Samsung CL8A uh, microphone. Uh, wonderful microphones, really like them. And, uh, but they require more volts than this mixer provides. That I need two channels of uh, mic input channels. This mic, this uh, mixer only has one which is another reason I'm probably going to upgrade to a bigger mixer. Haven't fully decided yet. We'll just see how things go in the world, with supply and demand logistics and all that mess, what the price is and availability. So y'all know how it is at the moment. But anyway, uh, one thing I like about this uh, mixer is it has a compressor. And that compressor uh, really helps, you know, kind of pulls up the low end a little bit on the vocals. So if I get, you know, get whispering too much, it kind of pull them up. If I get too loud, it'll push them down. And the best thing about that is, even though the one knob compression on the Behringer here is very gentle, it does help with clipping. Since I've been using the mixer, I have had no issues clipping into my Scarlett 2i2 uh, audio interface. Yeah, I do have it run into it. And the problem I've always had with the Scarlett 2i2 is getting audio into that thing without it clipping. If you get it, pull it down so you can talk and it doesn't clip. Then you run the chance of being too quiet 
and you had to bring it up too much in post. And when you bring it up too much in post, then you bring up too much in the background noise, plus hardware noise in post also, which is bad. So with the Behringer mixer, I get to turn up the compressor, uh, and it keeps the vocals from peaking and uh, clipping, which is really a plus. So even if the compressor doesn't do a whole lot in as far as just what a normal software compressor or a actual dedicated compressor would do, that one little knob does really help with uh, bringing it a little bit and mostly keeping those from uh, clipping, which I think is a huge improvement. And it does got a little two knob uh, EQ here, which I do bring up the bass and the treble a little bit. The bass I probably bring up by about six dB. The treble I bring up bring up about fifteen dB to add more uh, clarity and stuff in the highs. And I really think that helps uh, to get my real good vocals in. Now, once I got them into the computer, then I really start to work on those and improve them quite a bit. So that said, let's hop over here into the DaVinci Resolve. Okay, here we are in DaVinci Resolve. And I have this set up for the most part. Uh, this is basically not nothing impressive. Oh, I got some little you know, audio track here recorded, which says voice. And that is my voiceover track. Then I have my music brought in. Uh, all the music stuff, Epidemic Sound. Now, the thing is with the music, it is always very loud. It's always normalized up to around negative <laughs> uh, zero dB. And I'll, I'll play you this for you right quick. You can see. Hey, gang. Hope you all are enjoying this vlog on my audio workflow. So, yeah, if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. <laughs> so, yeah, the vocal track is very low. The, uh, uh, music track is really really high and the first thing i'm going to probably do when i go into most of the videos is i'm going to lower the entry part of it to about negative 12 db and if i just say do that right here i normally just do it by a per clip basis instead of doing it on a per track basis i do it on a per clip it's negative 12 and you can see that really dropped it down quite a bit now if we play this hey gang Hope y'all are enjoying this vlog on my audio workflow. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like. So that sounds better. Now, like I said, that's down to negative 12 dB. And it really depends upon the song. I know some songs, even though they're post leveled out to about the same, they just naturally sound louder. So I've been known to drop some songs down to negative 15 dB. Some songs I actually brought up to about negative 10 dB. This one seems quite low, for, even for negative 12 dB. In compared to my vocals and the vocals I normally record in or they kind of bounce around between negative tw uh, 12 and negative 6 DB so it gives me a good even vocals when it comes in like I said that compressor and that uh, that Behringer mixer really does help to ensure that I don't clip and my voice is down more natural and steady coming into uh, the Scarlett 2i2 so let me play this back one more time hope y'all are enjoying this vlog on my audio workflow so yeah okay so i got that and the thing i want to do is i want to go to fairlight and with fairlight's where i start adding because it's like fairlight's essentially it's a digital audio workstation however it's not as in depth as something's like reaper or something that's dedicated to like music and stuff it's more of a cut down daw for you know basically you know video production which it's working out pretty good it's got some things I'm still hoping they improve upon, but for the most part, it does everything you need for a video production, which I think is what it's meant to do, so obviously it's better. And another thing I always say, <laughs> essentially they have Fairlight here, just so the, the main editing interface, which is this one, isn't overly cluttered. You have the mixers and stuff here, but I normally just kind of click on them most time to get rid of them. And after I've made sure all my mix and stuff EQ and all that's level, then I go over here to uh, you know Fairlight do everything okay so yeah here in fairlight uh first thing we'll do is start adding my effects and when i go down here to effects uh, first thing i'll we'll do this demo uh vocals like i said recorded on my at2035 which means they're gonna have echo in them and the plugin i use to correct that is a vst when i got spl dverb plus and it's a plugin that I use to really get rid of those echoes and stuff in the vocals. Let me play this. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Really can't hear it too much. Let me try if you don't use golf. Let me mute that and play this one.
subscriber, please take the time to subscribe for more awesome videos like this. All right, it's not really noticeable at the moment, man, because it's kind of still hey, pretty gang. low. Hope y'all are enjoying this vlog on my audio workflow. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Yeah, you can barely hear the uh, the echo in the background at the moment. And so let me bring this up to a negative 12. That's normally why I bring it in. And that's uh, SPL Dever, what it does, it really cuts down on kind of uh, echo reverberation stuff. So it does it by a means of like, it does, I think, a uh, phase inver inversion. So it basically takes the frequency and turns it uh, back on itself. Works uh, really well without using that kind of compression. I really like it. Now, I want to say I got a whole bunch of uh, VST plugins I'm using. If you want more information and stuff on those, make sure you are subscribed because over the next quite a few weeks now, since we're pretty much stuck in the house, I'm going to be doing a lot of reviews on each one of these uh, plugins individually. And I got a lot of them I actually use. So anyway, I'm going to use negative 12, and that should clean it up. If you're not a subscriber, please take the time to subscribe for more awesome videos like this. Yeah, like I said, it's still kind of uh, quiet at the moment. I'll bring it up later because uh, I kind of normalize the voice, you know, quite more. And I'll go back to it because really can't help to hear it right now. But I always want to put it at the start of my chain. Then the next one I want to go down here is I want to add more compression. And this is where I add the better compression at. And this is a plugin I got called... TDR, uh, TDR, which is uh, Tokyo Dawn Records, which uh, Tokyo Dawn Labs is the one that makes it. Kontelnikov. And I use the Gentleman's Edition, which is the paid edition, and I really do like it. Like I said, I'm going to do a review on this and stuff later on as well. So anyway, let me have added to that. And you can automatically hear how much uh, more louder and stuff it is. Okay, let me come back. Hey gang, hope y'all are enjoying this vlog on my audio workflow. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Okay, so let me go back over here to SPL Dverb. Since it's louder, you'll probably be able to hear it. Let me turn it off right quick. If you're not a subscriber, please take the time to subscribe for more awesome videos like this. Yeah, you can hear it more in the background. Like I said, works wonders, cuts it out. So if you're running like a condenser mic like I am right now, being able to cut that out uh, really helps. So if you're not wanting to go over to a dynamic mic or something other than you just want to cut it out, you can grab this plug-in off uh, Plugin Alliance. Uh, it says SPL Dever Plus. When I bought it, it was about 70 bucks. Now it's about 50, I think 49 plus tax or whatever. If there's tax, I'm not sure. But yeah, check it out. Wonderful. And like I said, I'm using uh, Tokyo Dawn Labs Kontelnikov Gentleman's Edition. This is a mastering compressor. I love this thing. <laughs> so here we talk about it a little bit. For I know I'm not going, going too deep on all this, but it's got a soft knee. And what that means is most compressors go up and they hit hard edge and compress. They go up, compress like that. So what a soft knee does, it kind of goes in more gentle on the compression. That way it's more transparent. And I really like that. That's why this is like one of my favorite compressors ever. On top of it, it has something else on the Gentleman's Edition here that I really like, and that is frequency dependent ratio. So, well, you see the normal ratio I got right here is currently at two to one. For example, most of your bass and you need compression and stuff is down on the low end. So, I have right now set up with frequency dependent, and I've got uh, it's around 10 kilohertz where it's peaking out. I'm going to see the little knob here. Let's see if I can't expand that to 150%. Oh, yeah, here we go. So anyway, get that expanded out around this uh, position right here. Got it like around negative ten. It drops off about fifty percent right there. So if I you know increase this, here we go. You can see if I pull that on up, say one hundred percent, then it's not going to have any because I'm basically at two to one. It's going to be one to one uh, compression on those uh, high ends. So if your compressor is compressing your audio down too much and taking uh, rid of all your presence and stuff in your voice, yeah, 
frequency dependent ratio, which you bring that up. So you're only doing like a, for example, should be doing about one point uh, five to one compression on the highs, but doing a two to one compression on the lows makes the audio sound so much cleaner. <laughs> and it's got a few more, a lot of few more things and stuff to it. But that's like two of my favorite things about it. Like I said, got a review coming on it. You know, for too long. Do make sure you subscribe for that. All right. So when we got that one in, let's turn around and add another one right quick. And this is going to be uh, which one? Add this should be my EQ. Yeah, I got Tokyo Dawn Labs. And in with combination of variety of sound and Tokyo Dawn Labs, they went in with this uh, uh, EQ. Uh, EQ. I really like it. It's called Slick EQ. I have the Gentleman's Edition on this one also, which is the paid version. But don't mind the uh, Gentleman's. It's cheap. I, talk, I think I paid around thirty dollars for this, uh, and it's like really, really great. So let me play back the audio stuff here. Hey gang, hope y'all are enjoying this vlog on my audio workflow. And if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. This is like the EQ and stuff that I've kind of customized for my voice. Everybody's kind of needs to customize their own. But one thing I really like about this, and let me see if I can't make this in bigger too. Oh, yeah. Got a big old baby now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a lot of things about this one. It has a tilt filter, has a you know high pass, a low pass filter. On the tilt filter, what it does, it basically works like a, yeah, let me turn it on. Check out the EQ at the top. Uh, it's got the center around 650. You can adjust it where you want it. So if I pull in this way, it's going to basically tilt the EQ. It basically like if you want more bass, tilt it. If you want uh, you see more bass, tilt it this way. If you want more uh, you know, treble, more presence, tilt it this way. And like I said, you can also adjust it at any angle. Pull it, say, way up there. And yeah, you can tilt it right there. So you tilt it on up. Say, right, say around at the 2.5K. Give me a second. Yeah. So you can tilt it in right there and adjust everything where you want it. Really like it. So it soon does a few more things. So like this right here, tilt it down more like this. So yeah, it really works. But one of the other things I really do like about this one is it can add more harmonics and stuff uh, to your um, audio. But not only that, all EQs are not made the same. You notice it says British right here. Let me change it. German. Soviet, Japanese, American, you know, back to British. I really like this because, for example, Germans, you know, pretty mellow and stuff. The Soviet one has, each one of these, when you adjust the knobs, has a different way. It actually does it. You can see the Japanese one right here has, when it does the dips and stuff, is more uh, surgical. I think that's the word I'm looking for, surgical. Yeah. Whereas the, like, the American one is more smoother over around. And each one of these is when you're playing back the audio stuff, it has a different sound to it. And like I said, oh, not to mention the frequencies. Like I said, I got two and a half K on that one. Yeah, you can adjust them all. Let me put it back to two and a half K. There we go. Yeah, they're all frequent. You can move them around, adjust them. See, so like the low end, I got 100 hertz. The high end, I got 10 uh, kilohertz. You know, the mids, I got it 2.5. And if you really want to, you can stack these and stack them. You know, if you want to, like, got one particular frequency that's uh, annoying you, you know, say, like, something like at, at 5K, for example, a lot of your EMI issues at 5K, you can pop in a Japanese one, go over and, you know, notch out that 5K sound. If you got, like, any, like, EMI from, like, uh, keyboards or anything and get rid of that issue altogether. You know, very surgically issued out. And so you can stack them on top of each other. But this is what I'm running right here for mine. Really like it. Like I said, do check out. Uh, make sure you subscribe because I am going to do a full review and go over every little detail about this thing later on. So, got my uh, noise reduction, which is, get, I don't have, really have no uh, noise in here. So, just have echo, get rid of that. Then I compress. Then I EQ. And then I go down to, let me see here. Actually, I should do my EQing before. Yeah, let me move that. <laughs> I always do my compression uh, before, uh, EQing before my compression. All right, let me go ahead and add that one again. Doo -doo. Let me see, what was it? 
And down here. The Contel Nikov. Yeah, there it is. And I got it set up default. So, yeah. Yeah, I should always do my compression after the EQing. And then I need to go down here and also I'm going to add another EQ. But this is a different EQ. This is a TDR Nova. This is a really good one. And this particular one I have on here, I have listed as Deboxer and Deesser. And I'll play this back. If you're not a subscriber, please take the time to subscribe for more awesome videos like this. Yeah, we make this pretty big. Pull it back. Or enjoying this vlog on my audio workflow. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you're not a subscriber, please take the time to subscribe. Okay, so what's going on here? If you notice, I have up to four bands I can turn on here. You know, turn them on and off if I want to. You can completely move all these around. TDR Nova is a parallel dynamic EQ, but it also has multi-band compression, letting you choose specific bands you want to compress. Now, number three over here is a boxy noise in my voice. I don't like to hear, but I don't want to completely EQ it out. Because it really isn't an issue until higher, you know, gets, you know, the signal gets stronger. So what I do is I have a little notch here and I set compression at that. So I notch out that one little level, uh, level right there and compress that down. And that really, you know, helps get rid of that boxy noise when it gets too loud. That way you don't really notice it's been removed because it really doesn't change the EQ. Just kind of compresses it in those certain spots. And over here on number four, I actually have a compressor around 5K. And what I do with this one is sibilance, uh, any kind of like DSing or anything. That's why you probably don't notice I don't have a DSer so far in my uh, chain, is because I use this. Now, there are a lot of really good DSers out there that work very, very sophisticated, that do a lot more. I don't really need that much. I don't have that much uh, Sing in my voice. At least I don't notice it in, with my ears you let me know how what you think down in the comments below but yeah i use this to compress those uh signals as far as the sibilance and stuff and it's not really much it's just two to one ratio so when they actually hit about you know negative 20 db it starts compressing let me move this back and i'll play the track and let you see the waveform hey gang hope y'all are enjoying this vlog on my audio workflow if you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Yeah. If you're not a subscriber, please take the time to subscribe for more awesome videos like this. Yeah, I think that works wonderful. Uh, like I said, gets rid of the boxy noise around 750 for me. And it gets rid of the sibilance, you know, up around 5K. So, yeah. It, this works wonderful. I'm going to go into full details. This plug-in alone is a... Is a is a long tutorial on itself when I got to do a demo review of it, but it does way more than what I'm just doing right here. And I don't even have the paid version. This is the free version. So if you're looking for a free parallel dynamic EQ of multiband compression, boy, get this thing. It's wonderful. Okay. Now that I got that one done, all right, let me see. I need to add a, uh, yeah, a gate to everything. Do I add a gate now? No. I'm going to add a, my writer, add my gate last. I'm using this now. A friend and I recommended this on, uh, you know, E. Paul Fox's website. Uh, not website. His, what do you call it? Discord channel. Which, by the way, check out my Discord channel. I'm trying to get a group of people and stuff over on that thing. So, yeah. Where am I? Where is it? I have to organize these things really a lot better than what I do. Oh, yeah. Other. Focal Rider. Now, there's two. I got two versions here. I put another one I paid for. And you know, a friend just recently recommended this one. And what this one does, it's not a compressor. And I'm actually not even using the full functionality that you can use with this one. It, it has the side chain ability and everything, which I'm currently not using. But I'll try to go into that more and more uh, when I figure out how to do side chaining within <laughs> DaVinci Resolve to, you know, to, to run the plug in. But what this one does, you ever had to uh, be talking or something other and next thing you know, you're thinking, you start getting quieter and quieter and quieter, or you're sitting there and you're talking, you get too loud. 
Well, a lot of times people use compression, but the problem is that compresses everything all the time. This doesn't use compression. This is basically somebody with their finger on the gain, pulling it down, pulling it up constantly, which is like I said, it's, you know, it's a gate. It rises the gain constantly watching the vocals. If they're coming in too loud or too low and kind of not manually does it. What somebody would manually do in a recording studio, except it does it automatically. So for me, for somebody who's bad about talking and carrying on to get real quiet when I start to get real think real serious, especially do I try to do a tutorial for you guys and gals, this really, really helps. And let me show you, let me pull this slider back. So, hey gang, hope y'all are enjoying this vlog on my audio workflow. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. You can see it going up. If you're not a subscriber, please take the time to subscribe. Sometimes it goes awesome down a little bit like this. Sometimes it goes up. Yeah, so that works quite well. And it keeps those uh, vocals and stuff more normalized. So, yeah, I'm going to do a video on that too later on. Then, we're going to add a gate. Now, you're thinking, why do you add a gate? I have a really good gate here that I really do like. And you've probably already seen it in my list here. Unfiltered Audio's gate, dynamic gate. Let me go load it up here. User presets, my vocals. And the reason I like this one uh, is because this is probably one of the first gates that I've seen, uh, that I've used, that uh, sounds natural. A lot of your gates and stuff are real, get real choppy. So that's why a lot of people prefer expanders for voices and vocals and stuff. And I completely agree with that because... A lot of the gates and stuff I've owned, like my ones from Focusrite and stuff, are horrible. They just sound, no matter what I do, they always sound too choppy. Uh, and that's because a lot of times the release on them is just too short. This one has a longer release, and but has 750 milliseconds, what I got set to now. And I got my attack around 10 milliseconds, the hold around 100 milliseconds, the release at 750. Now, I got the reduction down to infinite you can pull it up, say negative 12, and it will sound as natural as a, an expander, except I'm really pushing it down. I won't completely cut it out when I'm not uh, speaking. And that's in case I do kind of breathing. I'm a big mouth breather. It really gets into my audio quite a bit, and it's horrible. And not everybody wants to hear that. I don't want to hear that. It's annoying for me to be going through doing, I finally get a tutorial and stuff done doing editing and stuff. Next thing I know, I hear myself go, <sighs> it's freaking maddening to, for to hear that <laughs> when you did such a good job on the tutorial overall and you sit there because my nose might get stopped up, breathing through my mouth. Annoying. So annoying. So I have that all the way down to infinite so you don't hear my mouth breathing. And because uh, I, I breathe a lot out of my mouth and stuff a lot, a lot more my nose go, <sighs> My nose just this has never been a good breathing through my nose. Now, one thing about this one is it has look ahead, and that's going to let the uh, plug in look ahead. I got it set to like 25 milliseconds right now, actually 25.8, but 25 close enough. And it kind of looks at the changes on the uh, the frequencies, you know, the curves and everything come in the waveform, and it will it will helps anticipate. That's the word for not participate. Anticipate the change. That way, it's not being choppy. And it really helps smoothing it out. Now, it might cause a little bit more CPU overhead, but I don't care. It's not using that much. I'm only using one instance of it anyway. Another thing of it's got this thing called hysteresis. Uh, I'll just shorten it for hister. All right. The hister, what it does is you currently see I have my threshold around negative 32 dB right here. Well, the hister is the drop off. For example, the gate won't open until my vocals hits negative 32 dB. But with the hister, I got set 10 dB lower. That means my vocals, uh, it's, the gate will stay open until it hits negative 42 dB. So that also adds more natural sounding. You don't believe me? Check this out. Hey gang, hope y'all are enjoying this vlog on my audio workflow. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you're not a subscriber, please take the time to subscribe. For more awesome videos like this. Okay, so yeah. Can't tell it's not an expander. It works so well. And it's not expensive either. You know, 
I was really wanting to get uh Fab Filters Pro G because it is a gate and expander and it is probably the best one on the market. And they've got it priced as the most expensive one on the market at 179 euros. Euros, that's like $190 US dollars. For what you get with it, this one's like 50. And I think it works great. And like I said, I I really like it. Really wish it did have an expander mode. But for the most part, I don't really think it matters too much. It sounds so natural. Okay. So that's all that I got going on my main uh you know vocal track. And that's also all all I'm allowed to put on there at six at a time. Now I could put more if I put an aux bus and send stuff over. So yeah, I could put more technically. But that's just the way I have it set up right now. So let me let you hear this one more time. It's the way I get set up. Hey gang, hope y'all are enjoying this vlog on my audio workflow. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you're not a subscriber, please take the time to subscribe for more awesome videos like this. Okay, so now the vocal sounds pretty good because I do a lot of work into the vocals to try to get my vocals sound better because I naturally sound like a horse's butt. I don't have... If I don't like my vocals, how they sound naturally, I'm pretty sure you're not going to like to have my vocals sound naturally. So what my whole goal is to try to make them sound as pleasing and as smooth as possible. Yet, I don't want to put you to sleep, but I do want to make it clear enough that everybody can hear it. So that's what I'm trying to do here. Now, I have another plugin that I'm going to add. I'll show you at the end here called Drama it's S73. It adds, I use it to add clarity and stuff to my vocals, and I'll show you it in a little bit. But let's turn around and turn this music track back on now. Let's see, this is at negative 12 dB. Let me play through this. Hey gang, hope y'all are enjoying this vlog on my audio workflow. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you're not a subscriber, please take the time to subscribe. For more awesome videos like this okay sounds pretty good however we can do more to push those music down when we're uh, doing like tracks and stuff now a2 is my uh, music track a1 is my vocal track now i have to go into the dynamics here and click on it and i have to i don't use the compressor within this one i don't want to use the expander gate but I do click on send and I will send it out. And then that's on, that's on track one on a two double click on it. I would do listen. Now I also do have to turn on compressor and I will use the compressor for the music track and I'm going to compress it down very gently. Around one five to one threshold around negative 32. So let me find it here. Uh, yeah, or no, just click on 35 here. There we go. And I did a video on this recently. I'm not sure if the video's out yet on how to set all this up. I'm going to turn that up to about a second. I really wished if you're going to put boxes in here, you know, black magic, you know, Da Vinci people, at least let me be able to adjust this. Jesus, let me type in there because I know what my settings need to be. All right. Cause I use a mainly like a 10 second start that was gentle or actually probably more just do 20 seconds. And that way it's not as hitting an attack so much. Now like I said, that's my ducking in case you're wondering what it was called. It's called ducking. It's going to press those audio music levels down while I'm speaking, but not while normally. So it's always playing at 12, but when I speak, it's going to push it down and the one and a half to one is probably going to push it down to probably around the, uh, pushing it down to uh, probably around 30. Let me check and see. Hey gang, hope y'all are enjoying this vlog on my audio workflow. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. Yeah, it's pushing around around 24. If you're not a subscriber, please take the time to subscribe. As you can see on music here. For more awesome videos like this. And what that really does is it lets me be able to speak and keep the music up when I'm not speaking without having to go in and manually adjust it all the time. 
which I think is really good. So that really pushes that volume of that down when I'm speaking. That way you can still hear music when I'm not uh, at a good, enjoyable level when I'm not speaking. But when I speak, it's not there being too loud, trying to muddy up my audio and stuff, my vocals. So, yeah, I'll play that one more time for everybody. Hey, gang. Hope you all are enjoying this vlog on my audio workflow. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you're not a subscriber, please take the time to subscribe for more awesome videos like this. <laughs> so yeah, now like I said, I have one more plugin that I use and that is the Drummer uh, plugin. We we'll put up here VST, Drummer S73, and yeah, I got my own little presets. Let me put my preset here, Master Bus. And okay, get that loaded. And basically what I do is I check my wet dry mix to about 50% here. Uh, the amount of uh, I'm adding is 50%. And I just used a clarity one. They got a bunch of different ones here. Like I said, I'm going to have a video on this as well. But let me play this with it. Then I'll play without it and you can see the difference. Hey gang, hope you all are enjoying this vlog on my audio workflow. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you're not a subscriber, please take the time to subscribe for more awesome videos like this. Okay. Let me turn it off and play through it and I'll cut it back on about midway. Hey gang, hope you all are enjoying this vlog on my audio workflow. I turn it back if on you now. enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you're not a subscriber, please take the time to subscribe for more awesome videos like this. So yeah, that uh that Drummer 73, really great product uh from SoftTube. Uh it does a lot more things. A lot of them I don't really use. A lot of the plugins, I don't use half the functionality that it actually gives me. I just use what I need to get the sound that I want. And this basically what it does, it works by compressing frequencies uh, to pull out vocals and stuff, especially like on the clarity and stuff. That way things sound more clear, easy to understand. And it basically, if it sees like one frequency is interfering with another frequency, it'll cancel out the frequency you normally don't want to hear. And that normally means it sees the vocals as a priority and will compress out anything else in the music that kind of help uh, you know, keep your clarity and stuff up. That way you can hear what you're saying. Now it's mainly used to like in music production and stuff. That way you're something like in your like maybe drum tracks are not getting muddied up inside somebody's vocal tracks. And it just really makes things a lot faster to work on. But yeah, that's my pretty much my workflow, guys and gals. Uh hey gang. Hope you all are enjoying this vlog on my audio workflow. If you enjoyed this video, please. Now, when I, like I said, I got the uh, tracks normally set to like, you know, uh, you know, negative 12 right now. Now, when I actually go uh, on the intros and stuff, it's normally where I have it at. When I uh, have up one of the ads or whatever, I'll kind of bring it up a little bit in there as well. But for like normally, I kind of lower this down quite a bit. So, like normally, if I want like the intro, or whatever, we move the vocal track here a little bit. And about right here, for example, I'll click on this and I'll put like a little, you know, what's it called keyframe. And I'll, a few seconds later, I'll kind of like duck it down just a little bit. And this like kind of manually ducks everything. But I do this in like a lot of areas where I want the volume to kind of go down because maybe we don't want to hear it as much. So I got negative 12. I'll pull this one down, say about like a negative 25. I guess about me more adequate, 29.93, close enough. I can punch it in up there if I wanted to. And so, if, for example, like this. Hey, gang. Hope you all are enjoying this vlog on my audio workflow. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button. If you're not a subscriber, please take the time to subscribe for more awesome videos like this. 
Okay, so yeah, that's normally what I do there, kind of like keep that pushed down and like special doing tutorials and stuff where you probably want to hear more of me than you are focused on the music and stuff. But anyway, everybody, uh, that's it for this little quick vlog. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do, how about give me a thumbs up? Thumbs up's highly appreciated. If you're not a subscriber to my channel, please take the time to subscribe. Subscribing's free. It's for you. i let you know when I release more videos. Until next time, everybody, thank you for watching. Oh, and stay safe.